So today we're going to talk about powders, what they are, why we use them on camera, and some tips for using them in the real world. So let's get into it. Hi everyone, I'm the on-set makeup artist. My job is to make on-camera talent look fresh, rested, and in a lot of cases, to make them look like they aren't wearing any makeup at all. Spoiler alert, it takes a lot of makeup. This channel is dedicated to discussing on-camera makeup techniques and how they're different from makeup we do for the real world. So don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on set. Powder has an iconic place on camera. I'm sure you can all reference some image of a movie star powdering her nose, or the image of an actor in a makeup chair being powdered down by a makeup artist. And there's a reason for it. It serves a very good purpose. So let's talk about function. What does powder do? Have you ever held up a mirror to the sun? It bounces the light right back. That's actually what your skin does. If you look at my lip gloss, it's meant to be shiny. What it does is it bounces the light back like a mirror and creates a shine. Our skin actually does this naturally. That's really all it is. If you're not gonna be on camera, you really don't have to worry about it that much. Yes, I understand some people have very oily skin and it's a self-conscious issue and that's okay. So if you prefer to wear powder every single day in order to mattify your face and feel better about your complexion, you should do that. Just understand that the reason we use powder on camera is to diffuse that light and make it a little bit less harsh. In the real world, it's not really something that you absolutely have to do. I like looking dewy. I try not to use words like greasy or slick or shiny. Because to me, that's not what it is. To me, it's dewy, it's fresh, it's youthful, and it just has a natural glow about it. Side note, there are no hard and fast rules with makeup in my opinion. However, I do have one. If you feel beautiful, you're probably doing your makeup right. So keep going with that. So when a person is going to be on camera, they're going to be very brilliantly lit. This can include tons of different lighting equipment and it really does focus mostly on the talent. They're usually going to be the center of the shot. So it's really important for the makeup artist to understand the theme of what's going on because maybe it's a scene where the talent doesn't need to look perfectly mattified. For instance, if they're just waking up in the morning, if it's a scene where they're exercising, a lot of times that shine can even work to your advantage. For instance, if it's a scene that's very poorly lit on purpose and the talent is passing through the shot, it may be difficult to see them because it's so dark. However, the light that is on set is going to be picked up by their skin. So if they're not mattified and you leave them a little bit shiny, it's going to be a lot easier for them to be seen in the shot. This is just a small example, but there are tons of scenarios. If you're ever thinking about working on set, you wanna make sure that you're listening and you're learning because you wanna know what's going on so that you can help the actor have the right look for the right scene. Keep in mind, however, that when you're on set, your opinion is pretty much always gonna take a back seat. Remember, it's a job and you're gonna have a boss. So a member of the production team will tell you how they want the talent to look. If you want longevity in this industry, it really helps to be educated, agreeable, and to be able to go with the flow. So let's get into actually putting on the powder. I like to start with the hot spots. No, this isn't an industry term. It's just the areas of the face that I call where the shine tends to come out most. This is typically the top of your forehead, the tip of your nose, either side of your nose, the very top of your lip, and your chin. If you look at your side profile, you'll notice that these areas of the face are farther out than others. Therefore, they're going to catch the light first and typically shine a little bit brighter than other areas of the face. This is why I call them hot spots. They're the main spots that pick up the light that if you're trying to mattify the look, it's usually best to start there. And what are powders anyway? Well, lots of different powders can have lots of different ingredients or one ingredient only. Some examples include powdered silica, powdered silicone, powdered dimethicone, powdered sodium hyaluronate, talc, the list goes on and on. And as I said, some are mixed with many different ingredients, such as foundation powders, which are meant to completely cover the face, or eyeshadow powders, blushes, etc. 
In this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about transparent powders that aren't necessarily meant to change the tone or color of the face, but mostly used to mattify. In the real world, if you have very oily skin and are a little bit subconscious about it, it's okay and perfectly understandable if you want to stay mattified. You won't necessarily use the same exact techniques that we do on camera, but some of them will transfer. So let's talk about some different options in transparent powders. Typically, like I said, they're not going to change or alter the color of the face too much because they're transparent. However, a heavier application may give a little bit of the cast that's the same tone as the powder. Here's what I'm talking about. So this is a transparent powder that has a little bit of a pink tint to it. We're not too worried about it being pink because it's going to be transparent. However, you can see as I'm applying it, a thicker coat will give a little bit of a cast. One thing film and television sets are never short of is surprises. So I always like to have a wide range of powders in my kit, just in case. This is an example of a foundation powder for a deeper skin tone and the tone is very, very warm. And here we have a foundation powder that is a deeper skin tone and is very cool. Are you getting it? I'll first prepare their skin. I'll apply a very light amount of foundation powder if they're supposed to look like they're not wearing a lot of makeup. If it's okay for them to look like they are wearing makeup, I'll go a little bit heavier. Again, maintaining the correct color and the correct tone. Then what I'll do is I'll finish it off with a transparent powder and slightly blend them together on the skin before I completely finish it off. So today my makeup is already completely done with the exception of powder. I'm wearing a primer, a foundation, and I've contoured my face. Hopefully, after what we've discussed, you're able to see my hot spots too. So let's get started. The first thing I like to do is blot the skin. Oftentimes, when the talent hops in the makeup chair, they may have some sort of lotion, sunblock, beauty oil, or maybe just some perspiration from the day. None of these is bad, and it's my job to make sure that I have them prepped before I put anything on their skin. So the first thing I like to do is absorb any excess oil. So if I notice that they have a bit of perspiration or dirt, I always carry a couple of different high quality cleansers in my kit so that if they need to, they can wash their face. Sometimes a simple makeup wipe is enough. Regardless, step one is remove anything excess from the skin. So today what I'm gonna do is blot my skin with an oil blotter to remove any excess oil that I may have. I start every day with some beauty oils and sunblock, and this will affect how shiny or how much light my skin bounces once I'm on camera. So just like with the powder, when I'm blotting, I like to start with my hot spots. It's really important that you don't rub, you just wanna lightly blot. The oil will go into the paper no problem. But if you rub, if they're not wearing makeup, you're probably gonna create some red marks, and if they are wearing makeup, you're gonna ruin it, so make sure you're going lightly. Okay, so all of my excess oil has been blotted. So now I'm gonna grab a transparent powder and I'm only gonna put it on my hot spots. I'm gonna go with this powder that has a little bit of a pink to it because I'm not gonna be using very much. I like to use an angled brush. This is not a requirement. I just feel like I have more control when I'm using an angled powder brush. And always tap off your excess. Can you see the difference? The pigments in the powder are opaque and they are preventing that bounce from the skin, therefore making me less shiny. So now I'm gonna go ahead and give myself an even layer of the powder all over my face. If I know the talent is going to easily start to perspire or their skin is just extremely smooth so it's going to become shiny again very soon, what I'll do is I'll finish off with a powder puff because that's going to give a much heavier application than a brush would. So it's important we don't put too much on the powder puff because again this is going to be a really heavy application. So you do need to use caution and I'm only going to use the powder puff on the hot spots.
So now that I've covered my face in a transparent powder with a little bit of a pink tint, you may notice that I have a little bit of a cast that's lighter than my skin. So what I'm gonna do is go back in with a transparent powder that is deeper and actually matches where I contour my face. So that's gonna be right here. This powder is, I would say, at least five shades darker, maybe a little bit more than my skin. But again, it's transparent and I'm not using very much and I always tap off my excess. This application is not going on the hot spots first. This is only going in the areas of my face where I already was a little bit darker, like where I contour. Now that that's complete, I would say about 99% of that darker powder is completely off my brush. There's only a little tiny bit left. So what I'm gonna do is use that 1% to evenly blend everything together. And now I've completed my powder application for on camera. If you're doing powder for the real world, remember that you really don't need very much and it's a good idea to use a transparent powder that does match the tone of your skin. Generally, it's a good idea to start with your hot spots in the world as well. However, you want to make sure that you're using a good mirror so that you can see exactly where you want to be mattified. If you are experiencing fine lines and wrinkles, try using a powder that has powdered silicone or powdered sodium hyaluronate. This will hydrate your skin while mattifying. So that's powders, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click like and share it with a friend. That's a wrap, and I'll see you next time. After watching this video, you're probably in the mood to buy some beauty products. So head on over to beautytap.com slash members slash onset makeup artist. After you follow me, I'll be able to help you with all of your beauty related questions. That's beautytap.com slash members slash onset makeup artist. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram too. Just search for The Onset Makeup Artist.